and welcome to So Bad It's Good. On today's show, we are going to be talking about Troll 2. Ooh. I won't! I don't want to! This is one of the big ones. This, this is like cult following, isn't it? This, <clears throat> yeah. is, this is up there with the room and, yes. and that kind of... Uh, they do showings of this, don't they? They do, because it is considered... There's actually a documentary on it as well. Oh, yeah, the best, the best worst movie. Dave gets the pleasure of talking about Troll 2. I too. do. I, I mean, I don't know how to kind of give a, an adequate synopsis of this film because it is so just all over the place. I'm hoping you do a good job because I, I remember nothing about watching this. this right. is, it's such a shame you <laughs> so don't remember this it film. It is, and I wish you'd re-watched it because it was just absolutely immense. Yeah. So it's a sequel to Troll 1, although not. Originally, it, yeah. it was called Goblin. Yeah, <laughs> which they've done oh. absolutely no work to retrofit it <laughs> in any no. way to meet with the Troll. They've literally just changed the title. There are goblins that live in the woods trolls. that chase people. Yeah, sorry, tro no, Troll. They, no, tro I'm not calling trolls. them Trolls because they never <laughs> mention Trolls. There are goblins that live, uh, live in the woods mm. and essentially they... Feed people plant-based food in order to turn them, those people, into half-human, half-plant beings yep. in order that they can eat them. Because that's just how they roll. And this is the opening before there's... So you get the MGM, uh, like, Leo the Lion roar. Yep. And then literally and just And you think, oh, this into, is a professional yeah, film. Think, Hello, <laughs> yeah. this has got distribution. Disembodied voice is talking, explaining kind of what these goblins do. She was a lovely girl. With huge eyes. And then you hear a, a young boy's voice ask a question. Oh, yeah, what is and, and we suddenly determine that it's actually, it's, it's Grandpa Seth. Goblins still exist. Grandpa Seth is telling you. Telling young Joshua a story, about, a bedtime story about goblins. About goblins. It's a pretty bad... Trolls. Like, uh, uh, goblins. <laughs> no mention of trolls <laughs> at any point. I bet it was a goblin in disguise. They will feed you anything that's green is essentially goblin made food yeah. so this and it is will turn you <clears throat> as a human into a part plant part human so this is like feast. a caut cautionary tale about vegetarianism actually the story <laughs> itself <laughs> yes I was going to get into this a bit later yeah. but seeing as you brought it up the director and his wife his wife basically had a big thing for vegetarianism Ag against it or no for no, it no for, for it. it and the whole purpose of this movie is in a weird way, because it doesn't come across that way. It, but it's, the main message is that meat is bad. Yeah. Steaks! The steak sausages! And hot dogs! But they've yeah. got it the wrong way around got because the, 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 wrong the way ones around. eating the vegetables are the bad guys. Yeah, this, this isn't that isn't the first thing that the director does wrong. <laughs> we then also quickly discover that said grandpa is dead. What are you doing still up, Josh? Grandpa says to tell me to stop. Um, it yeah. is a whirlwind, that, died, that first yeah, five The opening minutes. scene yeah. is, is incredible. <laughs> you learn so, a lot of things. Uh, Grandpa Seth has been dead for about six months. You were at the funeral, and I know it was very difficult for you. It was also very difficult for me, his daughter. They then go on holiday uh, to do a house swap. A house swap. <laughs> to, uh, they go on holiday to a town called... <laughs> to a town called Nilbog. Nilbog! It's called the spell backwards! Oh yeah, remember Nilbog, <laughs> which, <laughs> which has spoiler alert. Five people. Yeah. 26, including the presents. We'll be living like our ancestors did. Yeah, we'll be peasants and farmers. Just like people did a century ago. In her face, and I'm like, no, she's get, thinking, oh, yeah, shit, get back to her. I don't, we'll get onto her, because <laughs> I don't think she's thinking anything. They're going on this holiday. Uh, boy sees dead grandpa posing as a homeless man on the side of the road. He screams that they should stop the car, so they stop the car. He goes and talks to the grandpa. The grandpa says, where are you going? He says, we're going here. And he says, no, you mustn't. This is a bad place, little one. It even gives me the creeps. The parents come back, like reverse the car back up the hard shoulder. Turns out it's a homeless man he's been speaking to, not grandpa Seth. What are you doing, Joshua? So how about it? Are you going to give me a ride or not? Implied that he's got some kind of psychological damage since Grandpa Seth passed away. Like he's taken it really bad. But yeah. they think that a month in Nilbog living in someone else's house is going to make him forget 
This trip will make him forget about your father. That was the scale of mental health treatment yeah. in the eighties. <laughs> What are you doing to my son? Everyone that they meet in the town is a bit weird. Uh, Grandpa Seth has told them not to eat anything. We then meet the weirdest woman who essentially is the queen of the goblins or the mother of the goblins or whatever mm. whatever she is. It's a traditional dish in these parts. Oh, but you shouldn't have gone to so much trouble. No trouble. Really. Surround the people in their house. They have to escape. In order to uh, overcome the evil power of the, the, the Goblin, goblins, yeah. they all have to stand Goblin with their trials. hands on a stone from Stonehenge. <laughs> and think, Is it from Stonehenge? Think, yeah, she's, 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 uh, she's from her druid ancestors. She says, come from Stonehenge, and right. the stone is linked to Stonehenge and gives her her mystical powers. And that's what saves the day, basically. There is a bit where they're about to turn Joshua into a plant, half plant, half human thing so that they can eat him. Uh, and he's, he, uh, he's saved by the fact that Grandpa Seth's given him a rucksack that's got a bologna sandwich in it. <laughs> a double-decker bologna sandwich! <laughs> and then the and whole ending falls. is ruined because they go home and it turns oh, out the goblins eat the mum. The writer, director, and the entire crew were all Italian. Yeah. All right. Italian. He wrote this movie in Italian, <laughs> had no <laughs> command of English. It was translated into English, and it shows. <laughs> but apparently, he was so committed to his own script that even when the actors tried to suggest that they altered the dialogue in order to make it a little bit more free-flowing and make a little bit Merit more Kind sense. of like in the same way that the room is clearly written by someone whose yes. first language is But he point-blank refused, said, no, <laughs> you perform it as I've written Which it. Which is a bit like what happened with the room. Yeah. You know, I had read the script, but really had no idea what I was supposed to be doing with it and thought I would get some direction once I got there. But there really was none of that. The actors aren't great. Oh, we're, and they're we're, terrible. We're going to go into they're them. Terrible. But there is also an element of what could they do? Like they were working with dog shit. The way it is shot, directed, written is so awful. There is no excuses on it. It is just bad. And also he did another film as well. He did a few films. I just got a phone call from a guy spying on me. Was it an obscene phone call? Yes. Did he threaten you? Yes. <laughs> we've got Grandpa Seth. We've yeah. got Josh, who is the kind of the main protagonist. He's whose eyes really we're, we're kind of seeing this movie. Through. The little boy. That he is the little boy, the young son who sees the dead grandpa. How has, would you describe him as an actor? I mean, terrible. See, it wasn't me this time. For a child actor. For a child actor. I mean, for an any kind of actor, but he's <laughs> like, he, yeah, he's he's he is terrible. Speaking of eating. Do you want some, Joshua? No, thanks. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. And you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would... She's the next one to talk okay. about. She seems like she's just reading words, but <laughs> like she's not, like reading's yeah. not her forte. Don't hit him, Michael. Please don't hit him. He's just very sensitive. Like this is clearly after they've decided that, you know, they wanted to try and change the script. The director said no. It. No, I don't think she's no. even. I don't think she's. She's probably she's not one bad. of the ones. Who, oh no, because there's not a single scene where you go, "Oh, she's trying." <laughs> no, <laughs> because that would happen. You uh, yeah, had yeah. a few scenes where you tried, and in the end, you go, "I give up." No, there's not a single scene where you look. You look at her and go, "She's trying to act." Michael. Yeah. Who are the goblins? Very little emotion in her, which actually they could have, if they wanted to, just explained it and said she's also not getting over the granddad. Yeah, yeah they could it was have her done father. it. Yeah, they yeah. could have yeah, done that. Yeah, but you got to be a ballsy director to go. You are that shit. We're going to have to explain away why you're so bad. I don't think he realised she was that bad. I suppose so. I mean, if he's making this kind of tosh anyway, <laughs> and he's behind it, like, he thinks it's <laughs> yeah. great. He's written and directed it, Chris. He yeah. thinks this is gold. We've then got the dad who is overly enthusiastic about everything. So, kids, how's life? Listen, Mr. Waits, wait, I don't I... want to have anything to do with you. I don't speak to people who arrive late and upset their girlfriends. You've given me a bad impression. Come on, Dad. We've then got Holly, who is the daughter. Can I talk about Holly? Who you love. Yep, go for Holly it. Holly is my favorite. 
Holly, right? Holly. Holly. She acts as though she's on stage in the 1930s. I like you. But my family doesn't like you. They say you're good for nothing and they spend way too much time with your friends. Oh, Almost like a little panto. Yeah, I yeah. say a little bit about her. She's got a little side story. Yeah, so so we've also got um, Elliot, her boyfriend. Yes. He sneaks into her bedroom and uh, basically she invites him on the holiday. Is it true that your family's going on vacation tomorrow? Yes. I'll come with you. Okay, I'll tell my father that you're coming with us tomorrow. Like really, ra like oh yeah, yeah. It's, like it's... come on, come on holiday, and we can spend some alone time in the woods with you, my family. But but also like you've snuck into my house, so you haven't said hello to my parents yet. So obviously you don't have a rapport with them. But by the way, come to this place that's got 26 <laughs> people and come stay with us. We're leaving at eight o'clock sharp, but don't, you can't bring your friends because she's got a problem. Because with the, the whole thing, <laughs> yeah, the whole thing is. Uh, don't you want to come to Tonino's with us, Holly? Uh, don't you want some? Pizza? Basically, the choice she gives him throughout the entire movie is it's me, me or, your friends. or your friends. You can't have both. You can't do both. That's not what good guys do. That's not what nice boyfriends do. What's wrong with having friends? <sighs> Nothing. If you want to remain a virgin for life. I do like how it gets resolved. Hello? Oh, no. What, in so much as all of the friends? <laughs> Kill. <laughs> yes, and then there's a little line where they go, where the mother goes. What are you doing here, Elliot? Mom, Elliot's part of the family now. Oh, Elliot. Oh, he's one of the family now. Oh yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Good. The main one to to also mention. Oh is uh, the mother of the goblins, who is called Credence Leonor Gielgud. This is my house. <laughs> and is played by a, what I assume to be sort of a woman in her mid-20s. Theatre actress. Theatre actress, <laughs> who's, been, who's been covered in talcum powder. It's so Given bad. dark eyes, given bad taste. She looks like she's in a different film. Like she's come <laughs> yes, from a completely yes. different movie. Yes, it does. She looks like she's in Rocky Horror Show. <laughs> so, li little fact for Give you that I, just, I literally just read. Okay. All of the actors turned up to an open casting expecting to be cast as extras and were oh all given God. lead roles. <laughs> I'd rather say I was in it, but in the background, look, you can see me in a couple of shots, than say I was a main part in this. Yeah. Because not a single one of them comes off well acting-wise. Yeah. There are a few bit parts, for example, the, um, the, the priest, the, the priest said, yeah. um, who goes on a whole tirade, ends up being burnt alive. <laughs> Being burned alive. We because, <laughs> because Grandpa Seth gives him a fucking Molotov <laughs> cocktail. Let's put some fuel in the fire. <gasps> Cut it out, kid. You'll never be able to stop us. Only sort of half remembering this film. <laughs> it sounds bonkers. Chris, oh, it it's is. Brilliant. I would recommend even after we've finished talking about this, yeah. you go away yeah. and watch this movie again. So they get to the house. They have this weird crossover with uh, this other family. Here are the keys. Um, here are ours. Enjoy your stay, Milbon. There's no no explanation given as to why that family hadn't already started. You know, like a lockbox or something. Yeah, yeah like they'd already left left the keys behind. You'll enjoy our city. It has some smog, it's a little noisy, but but our house has all the major conveniences. A refrigerator, a bar. The car is going as he's still talking. And then he goes, oh. come on. So they go into the house and discover that the family has left them a selection of food, like a, a, a spread of food. Which is strange given their previous behavior. <laughs> Basically, Grandpa Seth appears outside the door. <laughs> don't let them eat, Joshua. For the love of God, don't let them eat. He tells the little boy that he has to stop them eating the food. And he then stops time. Tells Josh he's got 30 seconds to come up with some way of stopping them from eating. <laughs> One minute and seven seconds later. Oh, you timed it. <laughs> I timed it, yeah. Because he he walks so slowly back around the table. Yeah, right, okay. And then basically says... Whilst, hold on. <laughs> whilst the actors are doing oh, yeah, their I'll... best to be stuck in time. But it's like, it, it is this thing of <laughs> yeah, just... <it's... laughs> yeah, it's... 
<laughs> I've remembered what he does now. <laughs> As he stands up on his chair, there is this horrific <laughs> sort of super quick zoom yes. into him undoing his flies. And then it cuts to someone scraping the food off into yeah. the bin and he's pissed all over the food. Yeah. Do you see this writing? Do you know what it means? Hospitality. And you can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it. So he looks like he's going to take his belt know, off to beat the this. child with. Tightening my belt by one loop so I don't feel hunger pains. And your sister and mother will have to do likewise. He's doing his belt up by one notch to fend off hunger pangs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's going to challenge his son, his, like, who's like eight, <laughs> to see who can outlast, who can go on hunger strike and last longer. There's another point where Grandpa Seth says to him, we've only got 10 minutes to, to resolve this. And then it shows, uh, I'll, I'll be gone at six. And then it shows a clock and the clock says five to six. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. We have only 10 minutes. When that clock starts striking six, I'll disappear. Next favourite scene. I'll give a bit of build up because it's actually just a moment in a scene that I really liked. <laughs> so, so the boyfriend and the friends have all gone in a big camper van. So they've actually driven to Nilbog. Yeah. I don't think I've mentioned yeah. that yet. No, I, I, um, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So, so he, <clears throat> he catches he, a ride with his friends. He literally ignores what she said in the scene previous and brings all of his friends <laughs> to... Typical to man. Twenty six people in one little way. Like And tells his does... tells his friends that they're all those <laughs> of those twenty six people, at least seventy five percent of them are single young females. Oh. Are you sure it's full of beautiful girls, Elliot? Lots of them free and unattached. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah They wake up one morning and I think one of the guys the guy with the specs I didn't get his name but he goes out <laughs> of the uh, out of the the, ca the the Winnebago the camper van and he sees a woman in distress running through the woods he chases after her for a considerable period of time and then rugby tackles her yeah. to the floor. <laughs> she asks if he's one of the monsters and then explains that she's being chased by monsters. Mm. The monsters then turn out to be the goblins. They turn up. Uh, well, what are they? Monsters, what do you want from me? You see them in all their wonderful glory and these are some of the worst masks I've seen in film. I've They're got a uh, I've got a line here that just says special mention to the bog-eyed goblin. He has a stern word with them. <laughs> and then they <laughs> <laughs> He is not shocked yeah. by them in any no, way. No, he thinks he I don't know what he thinks. It's like um, Ace Ventura. Yeah, they basically <laughs> throw lob a spear at him that sticks in his shoulder. And he screams. He, but they then... he realizes it's real now at this uh, point. Yeah, that's the point at which <laughs> Wasn't the Jake. No. Wasn't the mushrooms. And this is where we're introduced to Credence Leonor Gilgood. They, they right. run to her house. She lives in a house that looks like a church. I am Credence Leonor Gilgood of ancient druid origins. They ask to go to a hospital. She says, there's no hospitals in Nilbog. <laughs> we make our own, uh, we, we heal yeah, ourselves. We heal our own, and then yeah. we get a creepy zoom in on a bob bubbling cauldron. Um, but she then gives them stuff to drink, which they drink. Uh, the girl runs upstairs feeling sick. She melts into the ground. Why would you, and I, I saw, why would you, run, why upstairs? you run upstairs? I don't know. No idea. <laughs> of all the places you can go, you just walked in the front door. Yeah. It's three foot behind <laughs> you, but you run through and up the stairs onto a landing. It's because she had to go upstairs so they yeah. could cut the hole in the landing to lay her yeah, in yeah, and yeah. cover her in green goo. <laughs> she goes upstairs, melts. The goblins come in and eat her. Oh my God, what's happening to her? which is terribly done, but also quite gory and sort of, yeah. you know. Um, but then he, essentially, <laughs> he turns into a, into a half, uh, half man, half thing, but she plants him in a large plant pot. <laughs> I, t I tell you what, all of his dialogue in this scene is fantastic. <laughs> he sits there and goes, And why can't I move? There, there must be a logical reason for all this. Shut up! So, so that's him. He's stuck there now, right? He's in this plant pot. Another hold on, one hold on. Those. We have to mention this because the line he says once he's stuck and he sees what they're doing is one of the infamous lines that you see on the internet all the time. They're eating her! And then they're going to eat me! Oh my god! Then another one of the friends goes out yeah. to go get some supplies because they've got no food. So he goes to the local store. <laughs> he gets a lift from Sheriff Freak. 
the sheriff asks if he's hungry, gives him a uh, a roll, yeah. a green roll, or a roll with green stuff in it. He eats that, so obviously he's about to start turning into a plant as well. And this is where he utters the inf- the infamous line that you really like. Where do the girls hang out? Girls! <laughs> where do the girls from around here go at night? <laughs> the girls! <laughs> Goes to the store, meets the, the store owner. This store the, scene the is, store is, is <laughs> I think, one of my favourites, all my favourite scenes. Us. It, we're introduced to the cra- Gummage, <laughs> <laughs> who apparently, according to IMDb, was really going through a tough time with substance abuse during the oh, making of this. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and it kind of shows. Yeah. Coffee. There's no coffee here in Nilbog. It's the devil's drink. Eggs. Yeah. Bacon. Are you crazy, boy? We've got milk, and it's full of vitamins, and it's free. The guy then walks off, and some. The, the worst actor in the whole movie tells him to go look for the house that looks like a church. Your friend has a message for you. Who? Arnold? Yeah, that's him. He said to meet him in the house that looks like an old church. Go look for the house. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Got you, Bob. He gets to the house, discovers his friend, pulls the bark that's grown out of his mouth out of his mouth. <laughs> forgotten that. And then he says, basically, it, the, the guy in the plant pot says, you've got to get me out of here. And the most Alan Partridge <laughs> style scene happens. Hurry. It's one of those things you thought that when they were filming it, they would have looked at it and gone, that oh, looks a bit naff, don't put it in. And then they've just put it in. And they put it in. <laughs> there was a line that he uttered which it had a sense of resignation in it that you felt could only be real. (laughs) Get me out of here, Drew. Just get me out of here. Just get me out of here. (laughs) Holly Alt, my favourite character. (laughs) She's doing a random dance in front of a mirror. (laughs) You know, that was all her own dance. Was it? Yeah, I read an... uh, Well, I I assume you went deep dive on this, I probably went into the IMDb facts. So Holly's doing a little dance in front of the mirror, and then, do you remember Demolition Man? You know, I was thinking, oh my god, I'm sorry, wrong number. I was thinking, oh sorry, wrong number. It feels like that. Grandpa Seth comes up on the mirror and goes, Joshua. <laughs> oh, get off! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he's she accidentally perving on his granddaughter. What happened? You were in the wrong room! I still have to learn the layout of this house. This didn't stick with me in a way that others have. Yeah. I think for me, 80s films that are a bit shit, that are a bit shit. Yeah. All fall into a much of a muchness. Kind of Sleepwalkers was a bit like that. I know it wasn't 80s, but it was kind of that kind of feel. Yeah. I kind of remember being a bit bored by this. Oh, you oh really? You're, yeah. I, you need to watch it again because I, I honestly think... I think I just think you're wrong. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I think it's so good because it is such a fine line to walk of being so bad it's good. Yeah. And I this this started to drift for me. I'm going to give it two and a half just because really I can't really remember enough about it. Yeah. Um, but I do remember having a giggle at it, and the masks were oh, particularly were. funny. Yeah. <laughs> So there were moments, but it got a bit old for me eventually. Even watching it again, and as I said to you, Dave, I, every scene in this is a winner. Every single scene. It's just, it's fantastic. It's so awful and funny. It is people that don't really know what they're doing somehow having some sort of budget to make this film. I I thought it was fantastic. I I actually genuinely think that it is on par if not better than the room it gets a five for me 100 percent. i thought this was great this is one of the best ones we've seen without a doubt without a doubt i'm not even going to go into explaining because i think i've yeah. said enough it's a hands down five yeah me. loved it this was it was absolutely just the message of the movie is that meat is bad and you should be a vegetarian but it's told through the <laughs> eyes of in the, in by the bad that guy. eat people by turning them into yeah, it's like yeah. well alright I'm going to carry on eating meat thanks very much <laughs> yeah. it means the goblins won't eat me it's just hands down start to finish makes absolutely no sense is completely ridiculous in every single way and is just so remarkably good for it this is the only one I've watched back 
where I have been in my own living room, sat by myself, <laughs> laughing <laughs> out loud. It's so bad. It's so good. Yeah. This is. It is. This is not. It's not so bad. It's good. This is so bad. <clears throat> it's fucking excellent. Yeah, it's brilliant. So Troll Two gets twelve and a half from us guys. Um, if you've seen the film, please do write down below and tell us what you what you thought of it. What were your favourite bits? Yes, which which part? Of All yours? of it. <laughs> and uh, please do give this a like. Please subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.